we are live. Welcome to Daredevil Season 2 Thoughts. So, spoilers for Season 2 throughout the entire video. I will spoil stuff that happens in later episodes, even when discussing some of the earlier ones. And in case this is the first video I've made on Netflix Marvel shows, the... Yeah, I watch one episode per day, so on average two weeks between videos, and after this it will be Luke Cage Season 1, Iron Fist Season 1, Defenders, Punisher Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 2, Luke Cage Season 2, Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3, Punisher Season 2, and finally Jessica Jones Season 3. I am doing them in the order in which the seasons premiered on Netflix. And yeah, this video will be shorter than my usual full season thoughts video because of my back pain. But yeah, like with, you know, before this one, I did Daredevil season one and Jessica Jones season one. Yeah, I love most, yeah, almost everything I, I love. I'm not going to be talking about every single thing that I love because, you know, even though I used to do that for videos where I went over an entire season. So, that, I'm just gonna open the document where I put in. Okay, so, right, obviously I have to do it like this. There we go. Okay, so that brings us to Season 2, Episode 1, the episode is called Bang. And yeah, so we open the season and the season opener on Daredevil listening to the city, trying to find the right thing to deal with. I really love that we only see the mask at the very end of the shot, just like with the first season, it's just incredible cinematography. So in the first season, with corruption, ruthless criminals, you know, the first season made the point that Daredevil's vigilantism is necessary with the corruption with his criminals, and here it's underlined as he goes after robbers who shoot cops. And a chunk of the budget must have gone to this opening, and it was money well spent. I love that at first we don't get a clear view of Daredevil, and the camera pans up the building. Daredevil standing there, smiles. And, yeah, so we go to the Irish mob, and one guy, who was the most American-accented Irish guy I've ever heard, it sounded very weird when he said, when he used Irish terms, I forget exactly which, but yeah. You know, he wants to take over now that Fisk is gone, but they're gunned down, only Grotto survives, and... Yeah, you know, it's later revealed that this was the Punisher. I love that we don't see who it is from right away. You know, this is, for a long time, shows and movies that had superheroes would show the hero. Uh, you know, that's what people paid for. That's why they bought the, the you know, that's why the studio bought the, the rights. Yeah, we gotta show them. But then... I'm not 100% certain that it was the first one, but one of the first ones, certainly, was Batman Begins showing, you know, a, yeah, showing Batman taking on a bunch of, you know, criminals from their point of view. And we, you know, really appreciate the fear he inspires in them. You know, it feels like you're watching a horror movie. And I'm really glad that that's something that... Yeah, because, again, with the Punisher, you know, whether or not you agree with his methods, for sure, he ins you know, he's, he's terrifying. It must be absolutely terrifying to watch everyone around you be gunned down with military precision, with military... Don't, yeah, don't they say it was some kind of military... The, the, the bullets were also military-grade, you know. 
and like just you're the the only survivor and then he comes after you too you know so that's a yeah and let's see. yeah and so Karen gets close to Matt in part to help with playing pool but clearly there's more there season one set up that she might get with either of the lawyer duo members and let's see I quite like, you know, when Grotto wakes up in the hospital, Karen explains the story she gave, you know, yeah, that was, that was really great. And he does the how everyone wakes up in the hospital in movies thing, which I meant to mention Luke Cage did in season one of Jessica Jones, and he wasn't even in the hospital. And let's see. Yeah, the I, I think he's called Turk. The, you know, the guy selling guns, as usual, and recognizes Daredevil's signature batons. And, yeah, you know, he knows guns. He has his ears. He has, is it ear or ears? Anyway, to the street. Makes sense for Daredevil to talk to him. I missed Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. With what? Every bullet so far? And... The meat locker, you know, people on meat hooks, and one of them is alive and gives Daredevil some information. It's not an army, it's one person. You know, in the comics, the Punisher is a one man army, so. I really love the scene of the Punisher trying to kill Grotto at the hospital. It has a very strong vibe of the original Terminator movie. The scene at the police station with Frank in place of the Terminator. I love that he disarms and knocks down the cop, but doesn't actually hurt him, because from his point of view, they're on the same side. You know, he doesn't have time to explain to the cop, no, 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 I'm killing a criminal. You know, that's going to take too long, the criminal's going to get away. So he disarms him so that the cop isn't going to shoot him in the back, and, he, yeah, not, knocks him down, and, yeah. Love the fight between Daredevil and the Punisher on the rooftops. Which gives me very strong hints of Welcome Back, Frank, which is an awesome comic. Easily my favorite Punisher comic. And that brings us to the second episode, Dogs to a Gunfight. And I am just really quickly going to fix this thing here. There we go. That's better. There. And... I like, you know, Foggy checks rooftops looking for Daredevil, finds him knocked out. And, you know, he has to... Let's see, on, at one place he says, my kids threw away my key. And, and the guy's like, what are you, an idiot? Yes, I'm an idiot. And he gets buzzed in, you know, and just, yeah, that's, I love both the first shot showing Matt in bed and the first shot in the room with Karen and Grotto. I'm terrified. To let you down so yeah the first season set up daredevil and now we see copycats well one copycat and then one copycat fake i guess it is a very logical next step i, I really appreciate that you know the the <clears throat> over the course of the first season daredevil takes down a bunch of low-level criminals working his way up the food chain, and by the end of the season, he has the kingpin put in jail, you know, like, the, the, or, or prison, I, I forget the difference, but the, you know, that, that really underlines, you know, he's having an effect, he's, 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 what's the word, he's creating results, you know, and, the, the you know it at the start of the season no one said his name and by the end Wilson Fisk is in prison and 
yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know, yeah, basically. And and actually, yeah, we, we do also find out that part of the reason why Frank targets the ones he does is because of the conspiracy. But, yeah, the... Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, I'm not 100% certain that Punisher technically is. It just at first seems like he is a copycat. I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe Frank wouldn't have gotten the idea if he didn't see a different... Yeah. And... A brand new IKEA phone. I do not think the pawn shop guy is enjoying the affordable Swedish crap. And when you're ready to tell me what's going on, I'm here. Literally, I will be staying in this very spot until you break. And. Yeah, Karen and Matt talk about if Daredevil led to the Punisher. She thinks he did. He denies it. Can't accept that this is partly his fault. And yeah, so Daredevil got the armor at the end of season one. Makes sense to here in season two have a situation where the armor isn't quite enough. So he needs an upgrade. And. Yeah, I love that when Punisher attacks the bikers, we only hear it as the camera focuses on the guy spraying down the truck for blood. Now, he's going to have a lot more work to do by the time he's done with the truck. And it is this thing of, you know, again, whether or not you agree with his methods, you can understand. Like, they didn't find a truck with a bunch of blood in it. They killed the guys in the truck to steal the trucks. And now this guy's just washing away the blood, you know, so, yeah. And... Grotto really does not like Foggy's jokes. I found that quite amusing. I knew that Karen wasn't going to kiss Grotto, but it was still fun to see her flip him off instead. Don't get your panties in a bunch. Obtain your underwear individually. This is a scoff-heavy episode. I think the only person who plays a major role in the episode who never scoffs is probably the Punisher himself. And, yeah, so this episode gives us more time with the Punisher. We got to see his face and such. I knew from watching Fury that John Bernthal was going to be absolutely amazing in the role, and, yeah, he is. I was legitimately shocked when we found out that the DA was using Grotto as bait. I absolutely adore the crane shot that shows Punisher high up, ready to shoot Grotto. Excellent rematch between Daredevil and Punisher. This place is about to come out war zone, a Punisher war zone, if you will. And despite Daredevil being there fighting Punisher, the cops still shoot hoping to hit Punisher. Which was also a really cool, like, escalation. It's not only the two of them fighting, it's also these bullets. And, and you know, Daredevil can hear the bullets, so he does what he can to dodge them. And Frank has been in a literal war zone, so he has training on how to, you know... Without superhuman, I'm, I'm pretty sure he'd probably just try to, you know, be as flat on the, on the ground as possible, but... You know, whatever. It's it's the MCU. It's not going to be completely realistic. Really tense ending with Punisher and Daredevil circling each other, both of them injured and both gone when Foggy and the others come to check. And that brings us to the third episode, New York's Finest. And let's Somebody better be getting my car. Bundy's five minutes out. Al Bundy? Hopefully he's not still driving that Dodge. Badass Punisher sews his gunshot wound himself. Cuts the thread with a knife that I think even Crocodile Dundee would approve of. 
and let's yeah, it makes sense for Foggy to look for Claire, and he has her number now. Matt gave it. Are you injured? Do you want to be? And yeah, the Punisher has led a lot of gangs to attack each other, which is, again, a very logical outcome of his actions. It's very understandable, Claire and the other hospital staff are struggling with all these people that they have to help. What they need is to jump genre into a slasher movie hospital. Those are always just about empty. Even, perhaps especially, on nights where, like, a lot of violence has happened. That That is the, yeah. I love how Frank handles... I'm going to be calling him the super, the the guy who comes up because of the noise. Although, I feel like the shouting match afterwards should attract his attention, but, you know. He's acting like he's still basically a normal person, relating to the guy, because he knows that the guy doesn't deserve killing, despite Frank wanting to kill many men. I really appreciate that. And, you know, he could have, like, knocked this guy out, like he did with the cop. That would have been quicker... And he'd be completely assured a result. And, you know, if someone comes looking for, for him, he can knock that guy out. You know, it can, it can be a whole thing. But no, this guy does not deserve it. He's this, you know, he hasn't done anything wrong. And he's not, you know, unlike the cop at the hospital, he's not really, you know, the cop at the hospital was about to... I'm not sure he would necessarily have tried to shoot Frank, but... He would have tried to, like, get him to surrender or something, you know, so, yeah. And, yeah, really, really great. And excellent dialogue between uh, Daredevil and Frank on the rooftop. Clearly, the writers and actors understand these characters. I did see, I want to say it was the What the Flick uh, reviewers, they pointed out, you know, Daredevil gets a pass because he doesn't technically deliver the killing blow, but... I mean, it was his fault that Nobu got set on fire, and then in this season, he throws Nobu off of a roof and makes sure that the, the Billy Club grappling gun is back in his own hands so that, you know, Nobu won't be lowered to the ground in any kind of condition to get back up, which, you know, if not for Stick, he would have, but, yeah, the... the you know, he, he, Daredevil does a lot of things that would put people on life support and, like, they would die soon. So it is, yeah, I, I, I guess ultimately if the, the show did completely come down on the side of either of them, it would probably come down the side, on the side of Daredevil since this is his show. I don't know, maybe they didn't want to do that since, you know, it's pretty clear from this season they wanted to do a Netflix show specifically about Punisher. I'm, I'm not sure why it took as long as it did, because like I said at the start of this, like the first Punisher season was like... Hold on, I'll... Yeah, it, the, the first Punisher season was November 17th, 2017. That was when it premiered on Netflix. And, like, by then, you know, basically, yeah, he was the last, even, yeah, even the Defenders came out before him, and the Defenders had to wait for all four of the members to have had their individual, yeah, I don't know exactly, but, you know, something, for, for some reason it took a while to get, but based on this season, obviously, they did want to make a solo show. It wouldn't have made any sense to just keep, like, the, the ending of the season even has him, you know, he makes the, 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 the skull logo, he has all the guns, and from, from, what was his name again? Blacksmith, I think, which is just false advertising all the way, because that man is not black. I'm, I'm not sure he's a smith at all, he certainly doesn't look anything like the actual black smiths of, you know, Will, Jada, Jaden. Terrible joke. 
anyway, the the I I don't think it's a problem necessarily that this season doesn't say yes, Daredevil is right, yes, Frank is right. It doesn't come down on either side, and you're kind of left, you know, we can we can kind of make up our own mind. But I mean, at the end of the day, like the you know Frank did significant damage. Did did he manage to kill? Every, I, I guess there might be some still left alive, but he killed you know a lot of criminals. And the thing is, like the counterpoint, there's very little that I like about the second Taken movie, but I do respect that they made the decision. No. This time, it's revenge. They're trying to get revenge for the for for what Liam Neeson did in the first movie. Because that happens. You can't in real life. You can't go out and just kill a lot of people who kill others and expect that to solve things. Because people commit crimes for reasons. With that said, yes, I do still really love seeing Punisher. You know, it's it's fun escapism, but I don't I know that it wouldn't work in real life. But yeah, you know, if they want because that seemed like to be what they wanted to do here, you know, because they specifically have Daredevil, you know, Daredevil doesn't say, "Oh, wow, I clearly led to this guy." You know, no, he's like, "No, no, no, I go up to the line. I don't cross the line." And Frank says, "No, you don't go too far enough." And yeah, the, the, at the end of the day, like, imagine if Frank took an interest in the hand. Imagine if he was going around killing all these ninjas. You know, the, the, I think there's a, there's a chance that they might have been able to save Elektra if Daredevil Elektra and Frank, you know, all attacked the the hand and it's yeah you know it's possible it's possible it'll happen in the defenders or Dead of season three i think it would be or even one of the punisher seasons i think it would be interesting i'm okay if it doesn't happen but i think it would be interesting if a story following this season actually had people coming, you know, the, at, at the start of this season, there's like some some of these Irish, oh wait, yeah, let, let me think, that's actually, yeah, yeah, Punisher kills a bunch of the Irish, and then like, the, the, there's the, that guy who, who doesn't want revenge for Punisher killing his men, he just wants the money, but then Frank kills him, and the other guy, you know, and, and Daredevil, yeah, maybe I, maybe at the end of the day, the season does kind of say, you know, uh, depending on the circumstances, either of them could be right. Because Frank spares Daredevil's life on the roof, and Daredevil rescues Punisher from that other Irish guy. So, you know, basically, if neither, uh, uh if either of them actually just, uh, if if Frank killed everyone, he would have killed Daredevil. And if Daredevil wasn't, like, basically Daredevil feels like Frank needs help, like, psych psychiatric help, maybe. You know, he should be locked up, he should be prevented from killing people, but he does not deserve to die himself. And, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, but yeah, I do think it would be interesting if there was a situation that Frank literally could not, you know, kill his way out of, because at the end of the day, there isn't really this entire season. He basically, the him him killing people, basically always works out, you know. And and by the end of the season, it's clear he doesn't kill a single innocent person. And that's also like he did shoot Daredevil in the, you know, in the forehead I think it was you know did he know that the armor would actually save his life because I feel like he could have just you know there are other ways to stop people than testing how bulletproof their armor is anyway foggy talks down the conflict in the 
E R. I love how smart and effective he is on the show, you know. And at first it sounds like dude, what are you saying? You know, he's like, You're so stupid, you know, but no, he man, you know, he makes really good points. Frank has Grotto and goes full welcome back, Frank, putting a gun in Daredevil's hand, trying to push him to kill Frank. Claire is very convincing doing nurse stuff. Like, Rosario Dawson really applied herself. And really, that goes for everyone. It's, it's, you know, throughout these two seasons, everyone is convincing in what, you know, whether they're a lawyer, blind, ninja, military, you know, all of them are completely convincing. What kind of choice is that? The kind I make every time I pull the trigger. That's a direct quote from Welcome Back, Frank, so that's awesome. I did consider digging out my copy of Welcome Back, Frank, and, and putting it back there. But my comic books are not very well organized. It could take quite some time to, to dig out. And I, I'm not even entirely sure if I tried to dig them out. I, th I think there's a bunch of stuff in the way as well. It's been many many years since i sat down and read them but i yeah i i read the entire welcome back frank you know all those stories like multiple times you know it actually like okay so the 2004 movie the 2004 game and this all take elements from that and and you know okay so the movie and the game take some of the same elements but all three of these have some elements from the comic that don't appear in the other two. So, yeah, that's really cool. Oh, and, yeah. And the and Punisher Warzone, the 2008 movie, also has some of Welcome Back, Frank. So, yeah. The, the, the only major filmed adaptation of The Punisher that doesn't have any of Welcome Back, Frank in it is the 1989 movie... And I'm just going to double check so I don't say something completely incorrect. It is from 2000 to 2001. So the 1989 one, literally, without the aid of time travel, which they had not invented at the time, they would not have been able to have any of Welcome Back Frank in it. But yeah, so let's see. Yeah, so, you know, Grotto died. Frank managed to anger the bikers, but Daredevil managed to prevent him from killing any of them. And it seems like he was going to focus on getting Frank away from there, but then at least one of the bikers threatened the super. Daredevil takes them down. At first I thought, oh, you know, we're getting the hallway fight again. That's nice. No, this is the sequel. This is bigger, and here also better. This isn't just a hallway fight. It's a hallway stairway, then hallway again fight. Now, there are cuts hidden, I think three when something completely covers the camera, when the screen turns entirely black for like a fraction of a second. But otherwise, it is a one-taker. Extremely cool. I compared it to the Raid in my Season 1 video. Obviously, it's old boy. I can't believe I got that wrong. And... See. Yeah, the, the important x-ray that turns out to be of, of Frank, the, the What the Flick reviewers joked that oh you know this x-ray i'm gonna put it on my on, on my shirt or something it's i mean at the end of the day you gotta you gotta have some explanation for it some some origin story for it if we're doing the gritty thing where everything has to have an origin story and you know nothing can just be flair or or fun yeah he got the idea somewhere and like i don't know is an x-ray better than there was a pirate flag in one of his kids books yeah i'm not sure that either is particular you know it looks good in a comic book but if you actually think about like if he's going around killing people it's, yeah you know like at the end of the day like bullseye always hits right in the center of the bullseye so he has, uh, I guess it's not called a bullseye. Is it? It's like a a, a targeting th thing, you know, on his 
you know, outfit. That makes sense. You know, Spider-Man, bitten by a radioactive spider, spider on the, you know, Batman. But Punisher, I'm not sure it makes complete sense, but it's cool. It looks really, really cool. Now, let's see. So, yeah, there was some love triangle between Matt, Karen, and Elektra. Not in this episode, but in this season. Not gonna lie, I, I've i really missed the chain since Daredevil stopped using it at the end of this particular episode. That was really, yeah. Uh, let's see, that brings us to the fourth episode, which is called... Penny and Dime, part of the title of the children's book that was Frank's daughter's favorite. And we open the episode on an Irish funeral. Somehow it takes them almost a whole minute before liquor is brought out, and just over two before heavy drinking, and about three or four before the brutal fighting's, you know, almost authentic. But And... Finn has anger issues. Love the dark score over it. And he knocks over a coffin with a body that Frank unhanded. And the Irish mob get really brutal to get info, including, you know, they... they let's see, I think they shoot the guy with the shotgun in one of his, like, is, is maybe the elbow or something. And then he says, I have five more shells in this shotgun. I count one more elbow and two knees. Frank see the Irish leave his base, clearly not happy with it. I mean, I realize he doesn't smile often, doesn't smile ever, but if he did, this would not be one. And only the trio show up to Grotto's funeral. Everyone in his crew are dead. And... Very cool when the Irish go after Frank in the at the carnival. I'm not sure why he wasn't more careful other than that the plot needs him to. Like, it's not some grand plan. He ends up needing Daredevil to free him. So, yeah. You're bleeding out, and I got all night. Badass. You're quite an artist with the AK, aren't you? Punisher, a.k.a. the AK artist. I want me money back. When I purchased your product or service, you gave me a guarantee. And Finn took a drill to Frank's foot, and you can see not only blood but gore pour out of the wound. Yeah, this is this is the this is the 18 plus Netflix corner of the MCU. And Karen explores the empty house of Frank and his family, or the former Castle Castle, if you will. I really love when Daredevil gets to the building where they're keeping Frank, takes out the first several really stealthy. And isn't there at least one long take where he'll like do something to attract attention, then disappear, and then jump back out without them cutting? Yeah, very, very cool. And Frank put a bomb with the money and a razor blade inside his wound. Badass escape attempt, although it wouldn't have worked without Daredevil, but yeah, the, you know, I mean, we knew that obviously he wasn't just going to let them have the money just like that, I mean, you know, the money's here, there's something else, and, you know, they dig, and you just see the massive explosion from it, yeah, great monologue at the cemetery giving some of Frank's backstory, it was like it held its breath until it got back, that's why it was blue in the face, gotta hand it to Brett, what, mommy cigars? And Matt and Karen kiss in the rain. Can I take you to dinner? Based on her reaction, not sure she heard those last two words. Hello, Matthew. You're super, super late for Spanish class. Like, by years, I think you might have failed the class by now. And 
yeah, so after a couple of episodes of Punisher on the Loose, one episode ends with him being captured. And, yeah, I thought it was really cool that they actually have this trial and, you know, Foggy makes a really strong opening statement and this whole thing. The, what the Flick reviewer said that, you know, it should have had Matt being the lawyer for, you know, he barely was. He He really doesn't show up and do very much. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, that would have been, yeah, and ultimately, I think they maybe should have chosen either, either Punisher or, you know, yeah, yeah, Frank Castle slash Punisher slash Blacksmith slash the, the, uh, conspiracy cover up this whole thing, or Electra slash the hand slash Black Sky. I, I'm not sure the, the season completely has room for doing both of them justice. And let's see. that brings us to the fifth episode Kin Baku. And. We quickly get a sense of the past Electra and Matt shared and how things have changed since. And at first it seems like Electra has no interest in Matt, but he can read her as well or better than she can read him. And that's not something she's used to. That's exciting. That's interesting. And the, you know, I, I like that, you know, she, like he's about to be you know kicked out of there and she's like no no I think she says he's with me and she's not saying that because she thinks that he is going to be able to you know convince her that he's interesting enough for her but maybe she's like there might maybe there's a chance like the fact that he would try to go that close in the first place like that kind of confidence is at least interesting like maybe okay maybe there's something here and then you know yeah I, I really appreciate it because at first it does sound like oh you know she's completely you know she's swooning but no <clears throat> and they break into the boxing place sure Electra is the one who breaks the window but Matt does go in with her no need to meet her in Montauk and yeah, like in the movie, they engage in martial arts, but it's flirting, dancing, not violence and fighting. These are two people who spend much more time doing martial arts than they do dancing, so this is their version of them dancing. They're not used to getting close to people who are as good at martial arts as they are, and while they aren't goody-two-shoes, which would also be boring to the other, they also aren't outright criminals, and it culminates in sex in the dirty place they broke into, even though they could be caught because that makes it more exciting for them. See, this is using sex and fiction, right? Characterization, growth, this is where the two characters are and are together. Either of them could easily choose to recite. Like, imagine you were in that situation. Like, they're, they're in the, the, the boxing ring. It's almost definitely cold. I don't care how much you do to clean that place. There's definitely some, like, sweat and, you know, let's be honest, some, some blood from, from some of the worst, more intense fights, you know. Yeah, the, the, the broken window, like, if someone heard the window be broken and called the cops and, you know, you know, but yeah, the, the, you know, in, in part, it's a really exciting situation and in part, they're that into each other that, all of these things, you know, I'm, I, yeah, I criticize some aspects of the season. I'm not criticizing that scene. I'm saying that it, it makes sense. It's just, you know, because, I mean, there are beds in New York. I'm pretty sure. I've, I've, I've only been there once. I wasn't there for a crazy amount of time. Pretty sure they do have beds. You know, the, the having sex in a boxing ring that hasn't been used for a while, like, that's only if the the just the the element of violence in the relationship and the the fact that both of them you know 
neither of them are boxers, but they could, you know, maybe not boxing, but like UFC or something, you know. And... Electra looks neither surprised nor unhappy about the server hacking. Interesting. Normal. Let's not get extra. I cannot remember my kids' birthdays, but violent soul-sucking events are seared in my brain. The birth of his children was not a violent soul-sucking event. I guess he wasn't in the room when it happened. And Electra calls, knowing that Karen left and that he was on the rooftops. Top. Just sing singular. And Electra takes Matt to a house they have to break into. Probably in another stolen car. Turns it's not turns out it's not a friend of Daddy. It's Roscoe Sweeney, so Matt can get revenge for his father. Are you sure? I'm positive. For what? Should she be worried? We could sit. Does a bear sit in the woods? And the date went well, despite Electra's call. You could come up, if you like. Maybe you should go into the apartment first, but if he were any more ready, he'd be done already. And Matt punches Roscoe repeatedly. Electra wants him to kill. And clearly she is being aroused by this. It's not enough to dance and flirt with Matt. She wants real violence, not towards either of them, of course. I realize some people would question why does Roscoe antagonize Matt when he's tied down. In my opinion, he's just so used to threatening people. Even in this situation, he can't help himself. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And beating Roscoe was the first time Matt used violence. He became Daredevil later, so she awoke that in him. The devil, as his dad's mom put it. And Electra wanted Matt and her to fight Yakuza together. She even has his suit. Took it when she broke in. She probably returned to the city specifically because she realized from the news coverage that Daredevil had to be Matt. I really appreciate that the show understands the psychology of violence. For some it's a necessity, for some it's a release, for some it's sexually arousing. Go. Episode 6, Regrets Only. I guess I'll just briefly... Part of why some people find it sexually arousing is the... Basically, when, when your brain thinks... I might get badly injured, maybe even die soon. Like, you, you try to figure out, can I procreate before I die? Because if, you know, obviously, you know, obviously if you're a woman procreating, you, you still have to survive yourself also. It's not enough just to become pregnant and then die immediately after. But if you're a guy, if you're a straight man, yeah, the, the lizard brain is going to tell you, make sure you impregnate at least one woman before you die. That's, you know, that way your line will not end with you. It, the end of your line will not be the end of the line. And, yeah, so, episode six, I love that we caught, cut to the perspective of the Yakuza from last episode ending on Elektra and Daredevil. Badass fight, some of it showing both Electra and Daredevil in the same shot, camera dollying in or out, moving to keep up. You can't mask that ass. I'd know it anywhere. Maybe Matt has held his kitchen's ass. I appreciate that Matt isn't a pushover when it comes to Electra. Guns connected to the Punisher. Many. And Matt does a great job getting the, I, f I forget the name or title, but, you know, the person of interest into a situation that benefits him and Electra. You know, the, the he gets the, let's see, it's like a glass of, of red wine or something, you know, and he intentionally bumps into the guy. And at first the guy's like furious and then he realizes, oh, blind man, um, no, don't worry about, it. you know, and once he's in the bathroom by himself trying to clean it, he's like, oh, blind bastard, you know, so... Yeah, he, he does have that um, prejudice. You know, he, he is an ableist. And 
that also obviously makes it more fun for us to see him, you know, first he gets the stuff spilled on him, and then, like, th yeah, they basically force him to do what they want, so, yeah. Very tense as Frank pleads not guilty, and he clearly has some personal issue with Reyes, like the trio had guessed. But yeah, it's it's such a clever, like, there's some really great twists with the, the trial itself. Trial of the Century. That is a great raising of the stakes for the second season of, second season of a show, in part based around lawyers practicing, hoping they'll get good at it one day. When Electra couldn't find the ledger, I thought that they had maybe guessed and moved it, but Matt goes ahead and finds it. And the security gets to where they are, but Daredevil and Electra were ready for them. Incredible fight. We see the shadows and silhouettes before martial arts, but not a clear shot. Like, yeah. And then, you know, the, the security gets up there, and they find the two of them, and they're, you know... Pretending like you know they're they're you know having sex, and they got really drunk and just didn't realize that this was going to be you know nothing but a couple of drunks. Very very clever. Fingers cut. No wonder they buy arms. They're running short. Who said I was yakuza? I don't know how, but somehow that cliche has not gotten old for me. I remember '80s movies using it, so it's at least that old. But I continue to love it. And, you know, you see the, the two guards who were Yakuza and thought that he was too. They, like, wrap a, a string around their finger expecting to have it cut. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And Foggy tells Matt about the trial. Very strong ending to the episode. So basically, Elektra appeals to the devil in Matt. She even wears red when tempting him. The part that wants to make Hell's Kitchen better by breaking the law and just... So many bones. Karen appeals to the pro bono... Pro bono lawyer part. Although, you know, while they're dating, I'm pretty sure she's also pro boner. Wanting to improve conditions by representing the downtrodden. You know, you wonder, would she be okay with him being Daredevil? Even if she sides with Daredevil overall. You know, there's a there's a huge difference. Like, a lot of people, like, I myself am not a fan of cops. But a lot of people are like, you know, the cops are doing the right thing. But they wouldn't want to be, like, married to a cop. And every day have to worry that, you know, you're getting a phone call that, the you know, the the cop in your life is never coming back, is never going to be, you know, there for you again. And, let's see, and while he, Matt clearly is sexually attracted to both of them, Elektra is more exciting, but also bad for him. Karen he can build a future with, but is he still so young that he wants the short-term fun? You know, I mean, they're just, they, they just got out of college. They're, they're, it's, you know, okay, okay, by this point in the show, they've had the, the lawyer, you know, they've had it for a number of... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I forget how much... They might have said it, but I, I'm not sure how much time has passed. You know, by this point in Season 2, since the, the very start of Season 1, where they had only been lawyers for, like, what was it, seven hours or something, when they... Yeah. Now, let's see... What do you call people who want Matt and Karen together? Marin? Cat? And are Electra and Matt stands Elecmat or Mectra? And that brings us to the seventh episode, Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. I believe it is the motto of the U.S. Marine Corps. Yeah, and we see, you know, potential jury members express bias either pro or con, Frank. 400 of them. I'm no doctor, but I'm guessing he's at least driven past Crazy Town. But you're not convinced yet that he went through the revolving door. Wish me luck.
seriously, that is every single time I watch a movie or TV show and someone says, wish me luck, my mind immediately goes there. Frank would be extremely useful in, in Shaun of the Dead, or any zombie movie, really. And Matt has to close the door on Foggy twice. He's not usually hiding anything from him, especially now that Foggy knows about Daredevil, about Matt being Daredevil. So yeah, the action is bigger and more frequent than season one. Very cool. Probably bigger budget due to the success. And Daredevil and Electra go after the translator. Daredevil almost kills him, which does clearly bother him. And like Matt, Electra gets hurt during the fight against criminals. And Electra sleeps near Matt, and, you know, he, seen through the camera angles, focuses on the parts of her he finds especially attractive. Normally, I would criticize the male gaze, but I do appreciate this is, again, this is telling us this is where his head is at. You know, trial of the century, and things are going well with Karen, but, uh, Electra, you know, he, he wanted her back when they were both in college. You know, he's, yeah, and, and she's been gone for years, and he told himself never again, but then she comes back, and, yeah, he can't help but, you know, so, yeah, I approve. And with Matt not showing up yet, Foggy tries to give an opening statement in his place. And after a few false starts, he does give a good one. Although the first few words start out sounding like he's doing word association or something. Or like he's just thinking out loud rather than trying to make, you know. At first he's like, Frank Castle is just as much of a victim. No, he isn't. And he did, I, I forget what the second thing is, but, you know. Then he says, you're, you're 19 sand at your feet you know and and yeah at first it's just like i thought oh no is he like cuz cuz he like a minute or two earlier he said i'm experiencing the the equivalent of the nightmare where you show up to high school naked or in your underwear or something like that so so i'm thinking oh no is he like trying to think of oh, i wish i was 19 again i wish i was on a sandy beach no no he's talking about the war that you know but yeah it's a really really great opening statement very unusual for Matt to not be able to live up to his expectations and duties and you know yeah it shows the effect that Electra is having on him he just traded in one war zone for another spot on that is exactly yeah that's what it is in the comics compelling argument between Karen and Matt about if Frank is right or not. I was only following your rules. She has a great point. And Daredevil is very brutal fighting the Yakuza by himself after talking to Electra. Why are the Yakuza digging a hole? Because they dug another one already and they need somewhere to put all the dirt. Seriously though, that's why the train car, why they fill train cars with dirt. Am I a tiny bit frustrated that, you know, a little over halfway through the season, they introduce this hole that is like, what is going on there? And then by the end of the season, they still have an answer. I mean, I think I know why. I guess technically it's a spoiler to say in this video, but yeah. I'm thinking some of this stuff is going to show up later in Netflix Marvel. And I, I can appreciate that, but... Yeah, like I said, I, I, I wish they had chosen either. I get, it's hard. It's hard. How do you choose between the Punisher and the Hand? They're both such cool, you know, yeah. Now... I appreciate that in this episode, Falky called Matt on his BS. Obviously, if he wasn't Daredevil, Elektra couldn't mess things up for them like this. Now... Yeah, because, you know, I mean, the big hole, like... Okay, I get that, you know, they had the little... Uh, 
I don't even know what to call it, but but the the thing that they place Electra in at the end of the season, you know, that thing came from somewhere or was hidden somewhere, but the hole was way t like the the width and length of that hole was way excessive for the size of the little I'm going to call it a birthing pot for now. You know, so there must be something else. And just the fact, I mean, they don't even go back there. Like, they, they go there and, you know, the, the, they have to fight off some, some, some hand. Yeah. Are individual hand ninjas called hands or fingers? Oh, wait, no, never mind. I actually, the hands, fingers is something. Never mind. Do you think when the hand needs all the ninjas, it can, you know, arrange on a short amount of time? The, the signal that goes out is like all hands on deck? Anyway, that brings us to the eighth episode, Guilty as Sin. Holy crap, the billy club didn't land for the entire duration it took between watching last episode and this one which for many was mere minutes but you know for some people it was considerably longer and and that is also that is a very cool way to think it just yeah you know he's gonna he's gonna drop it and they're waiting for the the sound for for it to land and the the end credits for the episode come up you know i, f I feel like some of these end you know when when the end credits start for an episode, there should almost just be a bit of text saying, you're sure you're not going to watch the next episode immediately? Come on. And Daredevil can't track the fighters, but he can't track their swords. Another amazing fight. And then later, you know, oh, so they're not going to use swords, but exhales. Yeah, Ex exhalation. Which, you know, if he tracked their breath when they're fighting near the hole, it would be an excavation exhalation. Exhibition, if people were watching the fight. And yeah, Daredevil grabs another chin, uses it creatively a fight. Stop teasing me, show! Holy crap! The Yakuza chased the co uh, Yakuza hand. They chase the car, one gets on top of it, and manages to stay on it through a lot of swerving before falling off. There'll be more. He may not be able to see traditionally, but even he learned how well the first season did, and the increased budget for this season. The, the What the Flick people said that there were too many, you know, ultimately too many fights between Daredevil and and sometimes also Electra and Hand Ninja, nin Ninjas? Ninja? Ninjai? I, f I forget how you capitalize, yeah, not capitalize, pluralize. Anyway, and yeah, ultimately, you know, and, and yeah, and too many of them were the same. You know, it's a hallway and the, you know, yeah. I really appreciate when they came up with other stuff, like here with the with the chase. And Stick has to pull the blades out, pour hot liquid into the wound. Holy crap, like, wow, that is, yeah. Make the goddamn tea. Dude must be thirsty. And a minute or two later, he takes a sip. I was kidding. I thought that he was the helper, but it really was for him. I mean, yeah, basically, like, the, the, um, ah, what's the word? Stick wants Matt away from him so he's not second guessing everything. You know, it's it's the thing of like the the worst like doctors don't want patient family too close to them when they're performing surgery because it's like ugh, look, I get that this looks really painful, but if you you know you have to let me do this, this is the right thing to do. I have to do it right now. If you mess with me, I might accidentally make things worse. Do you want me to throw you out? Not unless you want her to die. So, 
you want you want him to throw you out, but not unless he wants her to die, and she wants. I I lost track. Loved seeing Clancy Brown in court. You know, some things Clancy Brown have taught me I have never forgotten, including the enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. Maybe he needs to join the chase. How did he do that? By being Frank Castle? Plot armor. I got it. I was that officer. Whoops. No further questions. Yeah, you're not going to be able to get anything that could help your case out of him by this, at this point. This boy pulled the knife from his dead mother's chest. Killed some of the hand's strongest warriors. So he was an Ewok? That hole, it's just the beginning. There will be many holes. The future will look, will, will look like hole.io. I appreciate that Matt doesn't believe stake right away. Even in the MCU, you know, the this whole thing with the chase and the hand does sound kind of ridiculous. I need you to do me a favor. No one will pull this wishbone with me. What if nothing changes? That is the question. Was I a mission? Mission. So the first time you had sex, it was a mission of missionary emission. The hand actually used to work for the head, which consumed a lot. The hand used to have to pay a percentage of its profits. It meant they couldn't save up anything. It lived hand to mouth. And Karen confronts Matt. He has no chance to explain Electra. She also doesn't want to talk before the trial. And Foggy is, of course, also very angry with Matt. Doesn't hold back. Does point out how Matt can help. You know, after a while, Matt is like, okay, why, you know, why, why am I here? And Foggy's like, no, you can help by doing this. Yeah, those are not exact quotes. I don't remember all of these episodes. All details of all of these episodes. I only watched them once. And some of them were days ago. No wonder the lawyer shows on Netflix. The PG-13 MCU rated, uh, MCU rated MCU could not allow all this swearing. In. And Frank utterly ruins their defense. Like, wow, that was... Holy crap, You it was going really well, and then just, yeah. I mean, I mean he, it's, it's like just short of him saying, I'll kill all of you in the jury. Let's see. Yeah, I think that was too vague of a reference even for me. I'm, I'm talking about that Simpsons episode where... Bart sees something important and then is wondering if she should say it because it would reveal that he skipped class, skipped school, some, something like that. And Electra slits the young hand's throat. As Matt prioritizes Electra over Foggy and Karen, she's pulling him to an extreme that he's uncomfortable with. He's becoming isolated from the people that used to be closest to him. And Frank approaches Wilson. I see you got my message. Very cool episode ending. Let's see. But yeah, and that of course explains why he wanted to go to prison. You know, why did the um, that guard person say, Frank, remember what remember what you want or what what you want to get out of this, something like that. So yeah, I'm not sure the two elements of the Punisher and Elektra especially go together, other than that both of them represent what Matt could become if he was willing to be even more extreme, and that both of them are driving Matt further into the extreme Elektra through working with Matt, Frank, because of his effect on organized crime. And that's the thing, like, ultimately, if they had done either... You know, and Electra was like doing, you know, if they, if the two of them together did a lot of missions and it gradually got increasingly dangerous, or with Frank, 
you know, for a while he kills a bunch, but then, you know, he has to deal with consequences that he can't shoot his way out of, or kill his way out of. It's not always shooting, but yeah. And that brings us to the ninth episode, Seven Minutes in Heaven, which, when Frank Castle plays that, it is significantly different from when, you know, yeah. Let's see. This, this was a really fun episode. I really liked seeing Fisk slowly building up his power yet again. And, you know, ten minutes in, we're back to Frank approaching Wilson. And Wilson's deal does make sense for both of them. I do feel like they had Frank say, I don't want to hear more of your bullshit at least one too many times. I, I think he did it just twice. Just rephrase it a little bit. You know, like, yeah, like... The first time he could say, I'm, I don't want to hear more of your bullshit. And then the second time, let's see, maybe something like, what did I just say? Or, I'm not buying that. Something like that. And, yeah, Matt sends Electra away, tells Foggy how he feels. Maybe the end of their friendship and law firm partnership. Badass Daredevil landing on one of the guards without a cut. And Daredevil has to unkidnap Stan's son, Daniel. Seven minutes, that's it. Hence the title. And Frank holds the shiv to Dutton's neck as we see his guard bleeding to death in the background. Very cool shot. And Frank, we find out a little more information about the day Frank's family were killed. The blacksmith... And Karen finds some info, too, obsessing over this conspiracy like she obsessed in the first season, which eventually led her to putting Wilson in prison. Amazing fight in the cell block. All of Dutton's men against Frank. And everyone fights dirty, including Frank sticking his thumb in the eye of one guy, which is, yeah, like, you know, I'm, I'm not... I've thankfully never been in a situation where I had to fight dirty. But if you stop to think about it, like, the human eye is actually extremely, uh, um, like, it's a, it's a, if, if, if human beings had been designed, rather than evolving, had been designed for a video game, the eyes would probably be our weak point. That would be what you would want to try to aim for if, if humans were, you know, the, the main enemies in a game, you know, and in a lot of games it is the, the head overall, but yeah, like, a, a thumb in the eye, because that's, you know, that that's going to make that guy really struggle to concentrate on the fight, and just, yeah, you know, that is, yeah, and it is also, like, you know, he, he, okay, so Frank gets the information, and then he walks down the, the hall, and, you know, the, the doors are locked, let's see, I forget, exactly what oh right right and then the then the guards unlock all of the cell doors on the entire block and you know all of them are like what's going on you know i, I mean they probably think is this a jailbreak are we are we breaking out because that would be cool you know so they go out and one of them discovers hey dutton's dead and frank is standing at the end of the you know i mean they're not, it's, it's circumstantial but there's a strong case that could be made that frank Probably had something to do with that. Let's see. And, you know, when, when the guards come to, to take him down, he just... I, I mean, I guess we don't see it. Maybe he does fight as well. But I could imagine he just kind of accepts. Yeah. Great fight between Frank and Fisk. And Frank does indeed walk right out of prison. And... Yeah, so Nobu has returns, has burns on his face. You're dead. There's no such thing. Dead bird, I mean, people, cemeteries all over the known world disagree with you on that. Now, let's see. So, yeah, and the, what the flick critics pointed out, it's hard to see how they're going to manage to tie up all of these story threads effectively over the last couple of episodes. 
And that brings us to the tenth episode. The Man in the Box. And the opening of the episode is filmed, edited, scored like a horror movie, and I love it. Brett makes a very good Jim Gordon to Daredevil's Batman act. Just know, someday, I'm going to tell you how to do your job. That made me chuckle. Get all the cold sodas you can. Well, someone's thirsty. No fingerprints. Uh, Ying Lim's going to be fun. I guess dental? Open wide, kids. Mr. Murdoch, I'll be right back. She must be convinced she's not in a slasher movie. Many turns in the scene with the trio and Reyes, and the one with Matt and F with Fisk. I, I really quite like, you know, the... It's simple but effective that Reyes is now wearing this, like, college... Uh, uh, is it a t-shirt? I forget exactly, but just, yeah... All the other time, she's, you know, smooth, she's wearing the suit, she's looking, you know, really, really cool, really suave, so, yeah, suddenly, you know, and, and like, obviously, the real, the, the explanation, if you asked her, why are you wearing that, she would say, well, I didn't have time to, to you know, I just threw something on to get here so that we could find out, you know, how to stop the Punisher from hurting my kid, you know. But if you look at it just as a, you know, as a viewer, well, it's, you know, she's, she's less empowered. She, you know, yeah. And yeah, when, when Matt and Fisk, you know, there's a brief rematch and Fisk asserts his power in prison. You run this prison. Ask the guards. They'll deny it. Ask my lawyer. He'll deny it. Ask the prisoners. They'd rather cut out their own tongues than... Yeah, something or other. Yeah. I should have written the line down. But yeah. And, you know, he's like, hmm. He hits well, even for a good lawyer. Even for a really good lawyer. I, you know, get me the file on him. I actually thought that it was Fisk's people who got the, the police files on Daredevil, in, you know, from Brett in the finale, I want to say. But I guess it just happened off screen. And Jacques knows Electra to her surprise until until he reveals that they were testing each other. He's seeing where her head's at and she's seeing if he's someone she can go with. And you know, he's like, I am I am here to, to kill you, but we don't have to do that right away. Well it's very rude to keep girl waiting. I do really like, like, she's got this, like, she has this sort of British boarding school sophisticated upbringing, but she's also always talking about killing torture and, you know, ancient prophecies. It's, I, I really like that kind of, um, I'm not sure the word is contrast, but just the, the mix of, of those. And Frank protects Karen from the gunman, making completely indisputable that he is not the one shooting all these people. And Stick was the one who sent Jacques to kill Electra, and she gets her two sighs. I think they're, you know, one sigh. I think it, you just add the S for, for plural, but I could be wrong, since it's not an English word. Daniel and the others got out of their beds and killed Stan. Now they're going to have to deal with Matthew, Mitchell, or Murdoch. And the episode ends with multiple hands climbing the hospital. Epic. Since Punisher in the comics was introduced in Spider-Man, I appreciate that here it's Daredevil, since in the comics both of those are street-level heroes, and Frank is a street-level vigilante-slash-anti-hero. 
And it is clever that here Frank is dealing with a conspiracy that, you know, maybe it's more Karen than the lawyer duo can help uncover since, you know, it's instead of something more straightforward, since that wouldn't be enough to make episodes about, you know, I'm re-watching Punisher Warzone, and there's literally, like, they take maybe a minute to explain how we got from Frank Castle, you know, Special Forces, to the Punisher, and... Yeah, you know, because cause it is, you know, it's an elevator pitch. You can explain it really quickly, but if you've got a conspiracy, then you have to spend time untangling that as a, yeah. Now, let's see. Yeah, I can't help but notice, it, it bothers me more about this season than the first, but Many times in this show, the good guys will uncover some evidence that they think will help win a case or legally defeat a bad guy, but something will happen that means that the evidence won't work, so they have to find some other piece of evidence. Now, obviously, it's not a waste of time, since it does accomplish the slow drip feed of information to the audience, but it can still get annoying, since it is introduced as not just information, but the way that the good guys will win, but they have 13 episodes to fill. And, you know, obviously, it's not only this show, and it's not only Netflix. The, you know, there were times where Prison Break had a similar issue. I just happen to think that overall, Prison Break did a better job of not being, like, hugely, like, it's just, after a while, you know, like, you get super into one thing, and then it's like, oh, now we can't use that piece of, we can't use that piece of evidence. But we do now know this, so let's approach it from this other direction. Let's see. You know, in the first season, for a while, they, they tried to just find information about Wilson Fisk, and then they were going to, like, publish it and make a big deal, but then he goes public himself, so they have to find another way. And just, yeah. And that brings us to episode 11, 380. A semi-long take of Daredevil fighting multiple Yakuza, still badass. And Claire engages in some fighting, but she gets pushed out a window. Dee Dee pulls a save move that would make Spider-Man not approvingly. And possibly get a little emotional, but honestly, you know, what doesn't Spider-Man in the movies get emotional over? We'll nail him. Thor's already on his way. And Marcy with, visits Foggy in the hospital, which never thought I would be saying those words. Not not about this show. And, you know, she has a, you know, she presents him with a teddy bear. And, yeah, fo fo you know, she says, it's a Foggy bear. I just did a search on Wikipedia, and the only thing, you know, yeah, it finds... The, the, yeah, it specifically refers to this. Let's see, she is known for her forthright personality, affectionately referring to Foggy as Foggy Bear. You know, it's not a, it's not otherwise a, a thing. But that is kind of sweet. And, you know, she tells him, you do have other options. And that's, you know, that's why she's there. She wouldn't just show up to give him a teddy bear and be like, well, good luck with the other guy. No, she's, she's very... Uh, what's it called? V very business minded. She's she's all business. And Karen and Frank talk love. I agree with Karen and not Frank. People you let close. Well, people you let close. If they hurt you, you need to get them out of your life. Besides, Frank is clearly wrong. The reason that the people who hurt you the most are the ones closest to you is because they are in melee range. I love the shot where the camera pans from the window showing the mirror image of the car and the guys to the actual diet. Just, yeah, I, uh, the, uh, the cinematographers for this show are unbelievably talented. Great fight between Frank and the two robbers. One of them has a shotgun. The other one pulls God knows what out. It's the biggest hand camera I've ever fucking seen. And the pot of coffee that we know for a fact is fresh brewed, boiling hot, Right in the face of them. Holy crap. 
You're locked in here with me. So I'm not entirely sure why Frank kept Karen around if he was just gonna dish her after so little time. I guess the writers wanted the two of them to talk love of guns and love of guns. But the the thing with you know 380, it is a good I appreciate these little hints that Karen has something in her past that she's not sharing with the rest of us yet. And yeah, because I mean he's right. Buying a 380, that means you know the the yeah. And and yeah, the, they have their they have their facts, right? That was a 380 that she pulled. So yeah. <laughs> But Louisa was one of us. Goobble gobble. The money, the shit, take it. Does Frank look like he wants to take your shit? I don't love that Frank was about to kill the wrong man. I guess, you know, since it's not his show, he can't be completely right. But I feel like they made him be too wrong. Could Daredevil really not tell Frank? was about to knock him into the water. He wasn't badly injured or anything. And the episode ends with Electra and Stick about to talk. And that is like, you know, you sent someone to kill me. I can explain. You know, let's let's talk about this. That's that shows a lot of trust. And again, that's seriously, that makes sense. You know, they I mean, for a while he raised her, so she does still have a lot of trust for him. That brings us to the penultimate episode, The Dark at the End of the Tunnel. I know it's a play on the light at the end of the tunnel, but if it's just dark at the end of the tunnel, like how can you tell it's not just more tunnel? Anyway. So I saw that someone had said that the use of slow-mo in action scenes wasn't that good in this season. Yeah, I kind of agree. Otherwise, what are you fighting for? Cookie sex? They get some good tension out of Daredevil not being able to track heartbeats. First he struggled, then he tracked weapons, then they stopped using those. Now he tracks breath when they exhale. And... Yeah, and Karen plays loud music, and the camera cuts to, you know, underline. Yeah, someone heard that, and Frank rams the car into the side where Schoonover is sitting. They turn Stick into Freddy Krueger, and he just laughs. And he takes a bite out of the neck of the torturer in self-defense. Wow. And we get flashback, the guy tried killing Ellie, even after she apologizes, and she kills him, even though she didn't have to. And, yeah, it is that thing of, you know, they know that she's Black Sky, and they're just waiting. You know, for a while, they just, they hit her really hard, but then, yeah. And, and, she was, it, it seemed like she was going to kill him back when they were sparring. You know, she kept hitting him until they stopped Gotta go. Faster. And Matt holds off the hand and Electra escort missions stick. Karen tries to convince Frank not to kill the schoon over, which does not. Um, yeah. And Frank discovers the hidden area where the weapons are, so Schoonover was the blacksmith, and that's you know, Frank, yeah, Frank gets a bunch of his weapons from there. And that brings us to the very last episode. A Cold Day in Hell's Kitchen. So the What the Flick guys joked that the show now has zombie vampires when they talk. And not for this episode, but one of the others. But this was where I remembered to put it. And it is, yeah, I... I really hope they're going to try to explain this in later Marvel Netflix. And Nobu wants all 20 targets attacked. And, you know, it must be the people the Daredevil saved. And Foggy talks to Jerry Hogarth from Jessica Jones. And she's going to make him partner. My firm is going to need a very resourceful attorney. 
Based on Jessica Jones Season 1, I would have to agree. And Melvin made the Billy Club for Daredevil. And it is really, really cool to see that. And Frank returns to his house. Welcome back, Frank. And sprays spray paints the skull onto his... It, I'm guessing it's like armor, not just a regular shirt. They were asking about you. The hand got their hand on Karen. And the ankle monitor uh, turned on. Holy crap, they start cutting the foot off. For the, the to get the angle on you know what is this saw and really great to see Electra in costume and using the size to cut the hand down to size great conversation between Matt and Electra about if they'll be together in the future that really is a lot of hand ninja so Nobu fights Daredevil, Electra fights the hand. Could they really not have thought of something for Frank to do in the finale? Like, he's, he shows up with the sniper rifle. I'm almost 100% certain he didn't actually shoot anyone. It kind of feels like after a while, excuse me, his presence in this season was just a setup. Yeah, just there as setup for his solo series. You know, at first, he was a very interesting element. And Matt tells Karen that he's Daredevil. We don't see her reaction, so that's part of the hook why we'll come back for next season. And we see that Electra was dug up, put in a container, and she'll presumably come back to life. And yeah, the What the Fleet people said there's too much. Uh, actually, yeah, I already did say that. Yeah, so. So yeah, some stories in this season ended by the important characters ending up dead rather than proper emotional closure which I, I get it you know they have to keep things moving to you know if, if the if the show gets boring or predictable then you know people are gonna stop watching but I do think you know ultimately still excellent season opener excellent finale excellent overall season I, I would say, you know, I love all of them, but worst to best, Daredevil Season 2, Daredevil Season 1, and Jessica Jones Season 1, of the three that I have watched so far. Now, let's see, there was some... Oh, that's right, I just copied in everything. Yeah, I copied in a bunch of critic quotes, but it was just... It wasn't specific stuff that I wanted to get into, so that's not really. Let's see. Yeah. So the the second season on Rotten Tomatoes has an eighty-one percent. Yeah, season one has a ninety-nine percent. Season two has an eighty-one percent. But they are both certified fresh. Bolstered by some impressive action, Daredevil keeps its footing in Season 2, even if its new adversaries can't quite fill the void left by Wilson Fisk. And the audience score is 89%, compared to 93 for Season 1. Yeah, I, I'm not really saying I was disappointed, but I was a little surprised. I thought that there was going to be, like, a bunch of gang war stuff in this when really... There was just, you know, yeah, there was some, but it wasn't really about, you know, because, like, in real life, if you kill, you know, whether whether it's a criminal leader or the leader of a country, you know, if, if you take out the leader, there's going to be a power vacuum. And I thought that was good. They were going to do, you know, they, they were going to say, well, you know, Daredevil is impressive when he's beating up people and, you know, getting you know, high level criminals set to prison, but that's not gonna that's not gonna end the the issue, you know, and you know, with with Batman, you know, we could say, well, why doesn't he use his money to well, you know, Matt Murdock isn't he doesn't have very much money at all. So, you know, but yeah, the yeah, like I said, 
that's not really your criticism. I'm just saying that was what I would have guessed was going to be, you know, and, and I thought that was how they fit in the Punisher. He's going to be killing a bunch of these, and, and again, you know, yeah, for a little of the season, that was the case. Now, I, I think that's everything. Let's see if there was at all. I've brought up over the course of this video the, you know, maybe they should have made a definitive choice. It should either have been about Frank Castle or The Hand. And ultimately, I guess, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, yeah, because neither of them are really, there's not really closure. It's just that, you know, yeah, by the end of this episode, the, by the end of the finale, you know, you see Frank, he gets the, the, he gets a CD that, uh, where it says Micro, which, you know, yeah, that's his partner from the comics, so that's, but, but yeah, the, the, um, ah, what's the word? Ultimately, like, if you look at season one, it's very, very focused. Like, it is, it has laser-like precision. Everything comes back to Wilson Fisk. You know, getting more and more power and like the the people around him you know some of them he gets rid of some of them it's other reasons you know like i mean for sure um madam gao and i can't believe i'm blanking on uh leland they betrayed him so that wasn't wilson doing something to you know but everything is about how wilson you know yeah wilson fisk and Ah, what's the word? Wilson Fisk and Matt Murdock are both trying to make Hell's Kitchen a better place, but in different ways. You know, the the yeah, over the the, the entire season is about the two of them. You know, Wilson Fisk trying to get more power and and wield his power against others, and. Matt Murdock and his allies, you know, F Foggy, Karen, and, uh, Foggy, Karen, and Ben Urich. I, I guess, arguably, even, um, Ellison, you know, they're trying to find out a way to stop Wilson Fisk, you know, and then with this season, like, there's not really a satisfying conclusion to I like honestly I really enjoyed the Punisher stuff on this show but if they had just started if if Punisher just got his own show I feel like that would have been fine you know yes comparatively I thought that Luke Cage was extremely well used in the first season of Jessica Jones I didn't feel like that was just there so that they could, you know, launch his solo show. And, you know, honestly, part of it probably was. They probably had to try to get at least one other major character of, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. And for and for Daredevil, Daredevil Season 1 was supposed to launch a Night Nurse Netflix show, right? And then, like... The MCU wanted to use Night Nurse, but then they ended up not doing that either. Anyway, but yeah. Yeah, basically... There we go. Basically, the... Uh, there we go. Yes. Luke Cage and Jessica Jones, in season one of Jessica Jones, at least, are both dealing with trauma, and they're both struggling to make life make life make sense and and kind of you know just yeah and and they're and the fact that it was Jessica the the fact that Jessica was the one who killed Reba 
you know, and, and at the end of the season, we don't know. We honestly don't know how Luke feels. He might not have forgiven her. And, I mean, I can understand why not. So, that's really, really deeply compelling. Where here is just, you know, let's give the Punisher some, some time to, you know, I think... As much as I love the Welcome Back Frank stuff and love seeing the Punisher, ultimately, I th I wish that this season, instead of Punisher, had had Elektra in the hand and maybe more of Elektra gradually pulling Matt closer to her and, and further away from stuff that he considers okay and pushing him into doing really awful things, maybe actually have him, I, I don't think he ended up doing anything this season that he was like, that was just wrong, maybe it would have been interesting if he did manage, if, if she did manage to get him to kill someone, and then he has to really struggle with, you know, yeah, and, and you could have, like, maybe he, he tries to, ah, uh, let's see, yeah, I was gonna say maybe he tries to help that the the person he kills widow but then it's jessica jones yeah never mind but anyway the the you know and and ultimately there wasn't that much for, i i don't love love triangles i'm okay with them but it just feels like they were really lining up to do a love triangle and then they kind of didn't like they never pulled the trigger and just had a love triangle like Karen doesn't want anything to do with it. She doesn't want to work with him. She doesn't want to date him. She, they're not friends anymore. Because, you know, oh, strange woman in his bed. And all the times that he didn't show up on time. Or he showed up, but, like, he's really beaten up. And, you know, he's clearly keeping something away from her. You know, all this stuff. Yeah. I, I think that... Overall, the season would have been better served if the, the, um, what's the word? Ah. Yes. Overall, I think the season would have been better served if they had chosen Electra and the Hand instead of trying to split the time between the Hand stuff and Frank and the Punisher stuff. You know, I yeah, but I do think you know yeah I I like that they're willing to shake up the status quo like. I legitimately don't know what it's going to look like when, you know, the next... Because, yeah, apparently, like, it really, it definitely looks like Foggy is going to be the... You know, he's he's going to be part of... Uh, I forget the entire name, but Jerry Hogarth Law Firm. I have no idea what Matt is going to... If he's going to be a lawyer and just be the only lawyer working there, and if there's going to be anyone working... I mean, was Karen's job a paralegal or reception? Uh, anyway, you know, and yeah, what things are going to look like between Karen and Matt, although I do think that would have hit harder if they had played up the love triangle more. Yeah. And yeah, I wish they had that the, the hand was the only overall, you know, storyline. D ditch the Punisher stuff and give us some more answers because really, like, I don't... Did they answer anything? I guess the only the only real... Yeah, we, yeah, okay, so we got some backstory on the chase on the hand. We were told that Elektra is the black sky, which is also, like, you know, as the, as the, what the flick people point out, well, last season it was this kid, so does that mean that there's more than one black sky? And... Why are they so dead set on Electra Black Sky if there are other Black Skies out there that are probably easier to work with? Let's see. The... 
Yeah, and and one of the, what the people said, you know, it's starting to remind them very much of uh, Lost with this, you know, mystical stuff, and you know, tune in next week for answers, and then there are no answers. It's, yeah, but with yeah, I'm I'm sounding really down. I still really love this season. And I am very excited to see more Daredevil. I believe there's Defenders before Season 3 of Daredevil. So that is where I'll see him next. And yeah, really looking forward to that. So, next, next week will be a movie. And in two weeks will be Luke Cage Season 1. So, catch you next time.